Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog, and today we're taking a look at the brand new iPad Mini. This is one of the better updates we've ever seen for an iPad Mini, and it really finally puts it into a modern category, not only in performance, but also now in design and Apple Pencil functionality. So in this video, we're gonna begin with some very beginner tips and tricks, and then move into different accessories that you might wanna get to really get the most out of this iPad. And then finally, we'll go over some more advanced iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 tips and tricks for software. Let's go ahead and get started with what is in the box and then how to use the iPad mini. So inside the packaging, we actually don't get a whole lot. So Apple did not include shrink wrapping this year in order to reduce waste, but then we do have the iPad wrapped up inside so we at least get something to unwrap and that's always satisfying. Underneath that, we get our paperwork, which includes the SIM ejection tool if you do get the cellular, the 5G model. And then you also get a 20 watt wall charger as well as a USB-C to USB-C cable inside for charging and data transfer. And that's pretty much it. Now to the top of the iPad, we have a couple speakers and you have your power button. And this also doubles as the fingerprint scanner. And then you have your volume buttons down and up, which is new for this iPad. The first time we've had volume buttons at the very top. On the right hand side, we have a magnet for connecting an Apple Pencil second generation. So it magnetically attaches to the side of your iPad. And then we also have a SIM tray if you get the cellular model. So this is how you're going to insert your SIM card. And at the bottom we have our charging port, which is USB-C, as well as two speaker grills as well. And we have nothing on the far side. And of course, the back side, we just have our camera and our flash below. So to turn on the iPad, you can either press the power button up top, or you can simply tap to wake up the iPad. And once it's unlocked by using your fingerprint, you are able to swipe up, and you can also manually enter your passcode if you wanna go that way instead of using Touch ID. Now this is your home screen where all your apps are, and if you swipe far enough to the right, you get your app library, and this will show you all the rest of your apps, and you can search for them there, and you can also go through the prearranged folders. If you also wanna find an app, you can swipe down on your home screen, and you can search for an app right there, so that makes that pretty easy. So I can say MLB, and I can see that app pops up right there. Once you are in an application to go home, you're going to quickly swipe up. So again, just swipe up and you are home. Really simple, really easy. So if you wanna go back and forth between recently opened applications, you just swipe right and left. So you can see right here, just back and forth, back and forth, right and left to go between recent applications and there's no limit to how far back or forward you can go. Now, if you wanna see all your recent apps in one view, you slide up and hold just like that. So you kind of go up and hold, and then you'll see a tab view of all of your recent apps, and you can click on one if you want. If you want to see your notifications, you swipe down from the very top around the center, and this will show you any notifications you have. And if you want to change your quick settings, swipe down from the top right, and this will give you access to things such as your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, your brightness, and you can hold on to pretty much all of these. So if you hold on to brightness, you get a few different options. If you hold on to Do Not Disturb, you're going to get some settings for focus mode, and if you hold on to flashlight, for instance, you get different brightnesses. Now, if you wanna customize this view of your iPad, you're gonna go into your settings and scroll down to Control Center, and here you can add anything you want. If you wanna take a screenshot, you hold down the power button and then either volume button, and you can take a screenshot. Then you can click on that. You can annotate it with an Apple Pencil or with your finger and circle something. But we'll say we're done with this, you can now save it to your photos or save it to the files app. And then if you want to power off your iPad, you're going to do the plus volume button, the minus volume button, and then hold down the power. And then you can power off the iPad like that. Now on your home screen, if you want to move around an application, you tap and hold on the app and you can click edit home screen right there. You can also just tap and hold on an empty space on your home screen and you can move apps just by dragging them. And if you want to move multiple applications at once, you just tap multiple apps go to a different page and drop them there. If you wanna add a widget to your home screen, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna hold down on the home screen and then click the plus button. And then you can add it whatever widget you want. So we'll say we want one for batteries. I'll find the one I want, hold on it, and then drag it wherever I want on my home screen. And last but not least, if you wanna to get to Siri, hold down your power button. Hi Siri. 
and then you can see Siri will pop up there. And then finally, before we get into the software tips and tricks, one piece of software that can save you a lot of headaches is from the channel sponsor, iMobi, and it's called AnyFix. If you ever run into your phone or your iPad getting stuck on the Apple logo or in recovery mode or a boot loop, AnyFix can help fix that. Whether it's because you're upgrading to iOS 15 or some other issue, it can help you out. And if you don't wanna stay with iOS 15, you can downgrade to iOS 14 with this app and you do all of that and more. There's fixes for 130 plus software system issues and three different type of repair modes that ensure the highest success rate to fix any issues you have with your iPhone or iPad. If you wanna learn more, you can check out the link in the description and thanks for iMobi for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, so now that we have some basic tips out of the way and how to use the iPad, I wanna talk about accessories. So we'll start with keyboard and Apple does not offer an uh, official keyboard case for this iPad and there's sure to be some Bluetooth keyboard cases available on the market, but you can pair any Bluetooth keyboard to your iPad. So one of the more popular ones for super portable setup would be the Logitech Keys or the Logi Keys. And this is a very slim Bluetooth keyboard that, that once it's powered on, you can put the iPad up on a dock or a stand or whatever you want. And then you can start using your keyboard and you can use the different shortcuts such as command space to pull up the spotlight search. I can search for baseball and I can use the keyboard just like I would any other iPad and pretty similar to a Mac as well. But of course you can also use Apple's own keyboard and connect it via Bluetooth and use it that way as too for writing documents or whatever you need. So those are a couple options with keyboards. Now in terms of a mouse, you can also connect any mouse. So if you really want to go old school, you can connect a USB mouse to your iPad. So just for example, I'm going to connect this very old Apple mouse to the iPad using a USB-C adapter. As you can see, I'm moving that mouse around. I can click, uh, but you can also connect a portable mouse. And this is the Logitech Anywhere 2S, and I've reviewed the Logitech Three, and also the Logitech Pebble is a great option. So if you want a portable mouse that you can connect to the iPad and use for scrolling, uh, you can definitely connect a Bluetooth mouse to your iPad and you do it the same way you connect to a computer, you put it into pairing mode and then connect in your Bluetooth settings. And that's really nice. Of course, you're going to want a smaller a mouse with this smaller iPad. Otherwise, that'd be a pretty cumbersome setup. Finally, in terms of USB-C, because this iPad does have USB-C, you can now connect any accessories that you would connect to a full-size iPad or most of what you can connect to a Mac. So I already showed you the USB-C to USB-A connector that I used, and there's a variety of these. I'll leave some links in the description, but you can connect a bunch of different devices, whether it be a USB hard drive, a mouse like I just showed you. You can also connect a hub like this hyperdrive one that I use and then you just plug it into the bottom of your iPad and then all of a sudden you have SD card, micro SD, USB, headphone jack, another USB-C for charging and then up top we have HDMI if you wanted to connect this to a monitor or anything similar and that's really nice. So you can connect a ton of accessories to this and you can also use this USB-C port right here to charge other devices. For instance, if I plug this connection in, I can connect the other side to my iPhone and charge my iPhone. So let me show you what that looks like. And you can now see I am charging my iPhone from the iPad, which is pretty great. You can also charge an Apple Watch or a Garmin or your AirPods, or whatever device you want using this USB-C hub. So your iPad can act as a portable power pack, which is actually really nice. But you can also take it a step further if you ever wanted to connect a microphone. You could connect this microphone to this iPad just with the same process I showed you with a USB-C hub. So that's all really great. Now next I want to talk about chargers. So Apple does give you the 20 watt charger in the box, but there's also a lot of other options out there if you want something smaller or more portable. So for instance, I have this cube here from Anchor. This is 20 watts, but much smaller. And this is great if you want to throw it in a backpack to always have a fast charger on the go. Or I also have one here from Speaking, which is pretty similar with folding prongs, USB-C. So that's really great too. Uh, and then there's some other options. So if you want a charger for putting in a backpack or purse or on the go, uh, there's some really nice options out there that are super small, much smaller than Apple. So leave some links down in the description as well if you want an extra charger for your iPad on the go. Now in terms of the stylus, of course you can buy Apple's for $129 and that's a really nice one. It's going to magnetically attach to the top of your iPad. You can also buy something for around $70, $70 or $79. This is the Logitech Crayon. 
It has similar functionality and you can write with your iPad using this option and this is pretty good too. And then last but not least, you do have third party options and I'll leave a link down in the description to a video that I made talking about different third party stylus options. These are around $30 and they get the job done is all you're looking for is taking very basic notes and you get some pretty good notes out of your iPad with pretty much any of these options. So Apple's option is definitely the best because it attaches magnetically and it charges automatically and it's just the best overall. But if you're looking to save money, you can spend $50 less with this and nearly $100 less with something like this. So I'll leave those options linked down below so you can check out different stylus options. Next, I wanna check out some other tips for the iPad now. So because of this really small screen, I found that using it as an, a Kindle reader or like an ebook reader is really great. So of course you can browse the Kindle app or the Apple Books app and get tons of eBooks that way. But what's also nice is that you can find books on the public domain, whether it be Gutenberg or just anywhere else on the internet. And then you can click the share button up top and share it to your favorite app. So for instance, I can share this to Kindle and then I go into Kindle and I have that available there to read for free. So there's a lot of free resources out there. If you wanna annotate this, you can share it to a different app such as Notability or somewhere else that allows for annotation on imports too. So that's a really great feature. Next, because this iPad does have a smaller screen size, you might wanna be careful about text size on different apps. So one feature that you can do now with iPadOS 15 is if you have the little text size indicator there on the bottom in Control Center, you can go in and customize your text size for the whole OS or just per app basis. So whatever app you're in, you can customize the text size for that app really easily. So if certain apps just are harder to read on the smaller screen size versus other iPads, you can go in and customize that font size to whatever you want on a per app basis, which is really handy for the smaller iPad. Now, when you're typing on the iPad, you can also use the space bar as a cursor. So if you need to adjust your text quickly, hold down the space bar and you can drag that across to make an adjustment. And very easily you can fix mistakes or edit your text. Now, there's also a couple keyboard options. So if you hold down the keyboard at the bottom, you can undock it. You can also do a split keyboard. So this makes it easier to type with two hands or you can just do a floating keyboard and this basically just turns it into an iPhone keyboard. And you can do things such as the swipe text. So I'm gonna say hello uh, with the swipe text and then you can bring it back just like that. So you get several keyboard options as well. Now another new feature with the iPadOS 15 that I really like is white noise. So you can tell Siri to play different white noise sounds or you can click on the hearing accessibility setting. And from there you can see the background noise tab and you can turn on different background noises right there and you can choose what those sound like. So this is really great for doing things such as reading like we talked about before or studying. You can use this to read and study uh, with some white noise in the background. Next I want to talk about multitasking on the iPad. So you can do left and right multitasking pretty easily and to do this you tap the top of your screen and then you can choose to do left or right and you choose an app to put it on the side or you can just drag an app and put it on the half of the screen that you want it on like that. So I've got two apps open here. I've got files on this side and then I have Safari on this side. Then you can also drag over an app from the side. So you can drag it over like this and just leave it on the side of your screen or you can swipe over from the side. So here I've got music over here but then I also have a picture and picture video that I can play over here so I currently have four apps open at once. I could have a video, I could have something like notes, something like a document, and anything else I wanted over here. And you see the video just ended, but I had four apps running at once, which is pretty cool and pretty powerful. Now, anywhere on the operating system with this iPad, you can take your pencil or your finger and slide in from the bottom corner, and you can start a quick note. And with this, you can quickly annotate or narrate anything that you're on. And then when you click done, it'll save it in your notes app under the section quick notes and here if you're on a web page you can see you can also add a link that will automatically take you to that link and also anytime that you go to that link it'll pop up the quick note that's attached to it so you always have a note ready for you when you're going to a certain website or article or anything like that that can be linked so that's super powerful and really cool
And finally, last but not least, there are some nice default wallpapers for the iPad. If you go into the wallpaper settings, you can choose between stills, which have both night and dark mode, which have dark mode and regular mode, but then also dynamic, which are pretty old. But if you really wanna go the next level with your wallpapers, you're gonna to wanna to go to idownloadblog.com. And there we have a wallpaper section with tons of options available, and you can just click on it and see the latest. So you can see we have the official iPad mini 6 wallpapers, but then if you want something else like iPhone 13 Pro lights, you can download any of these to your iPad in full resolution, which is great. That's about it for my tips and tricks with the iPad mini 6. It's a pretty cool device in a small package, basically powering everything that a bigger iPad can do, but in something very portable. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and thank you very much for watching.